just on that topic, I think that there's something very deeply cathartic about taking action in this way. And I do think it I do think it answers it answers a need for some people, which is which is good. Um, and um, I don't know if you've read um, Rebecca Solnit, Hope in the Dark. I was reading that a while ago and there's a quote in there from somebody who's part of a movement who said, you know, and as soon as I got into the police cell, the the, the a feeling a, a weight lifted off my shoulders that I didn't even know was there. Um, and that's also been my experience of, of arrest earlier this year um, for demonstration. Um which is a very interesting experience, I think. Um, but what's next? So, um, <clears throat> well, we we started off obviously much smaller than than we are now, and there's lots and lots of people getting involved, and um, there's something of a review and restructure process going on at the moment. Um, we aim to create a system that um, can um, that can offer a, a space to um, hopefully several million people <clears throat> um which is which is the kind of uh, which is also a, a data driven uh decision uh based on sort of assessment of other successful movements of the past how many people were in them in proportion to the size of the country where they were operational how many people does it take to change the course of um of uh, political history for for a nation or whatever um and so there's a lot of work going on now to try to make sure that systems are set up in ways which can expand and which function. Um, what we do is largely based on research and data and also debrief. So lots of debriefs have already taken place. We've spent a lot of time reflecting and talking about what's worked, what hasn't worked, what needs to be improved. Uh, we've just sent out a questionnaire to the wider public to say, here, you, here's some Here's some questions that we'd like you to to reflect on if you've got the time and the inclination so you can let us know what you feel and, and what you think and how, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong um there's a lot of scrutiny at the moment on kind of the internal structure and and what we're doing because i think uh sometime back you know we did nobody cared what we were doing so <laughs> we would we were just getting on with it and then when you get to um the position that we're in now of course people want you to be totally transparent so we're working towards transparency as well um so that people can understand kind of um how decisions get made and and who's making them and and whether there's accountability for everything that, that happens uh and also it's quite a it's an attempt to create a decentralized network uh which doesn't have a sort of ordinary hierarchy structure and it doesn't have an ordinary um consensus based decision making process either um which allows you to be very, be very rapid in in building momentum uh if you if you function in this way we've been st studying sort of holons and um holacracy uh as a means to to create a sort of post consensus organizing model uh where you have people can sort of form their own small working groups and they're all interconnected and they're all independently sort of like functional and mandated to achieve certain things um so that you can create a yeah a, a, a sort of hopefully very very broadly spread out decentralized and um highly sort of functioning and an efficient like network of people who are all motivated to sort of act for the same for the same purposes if you like um so that's that's no mean feat obviously because those things don't really exist um <laughs> so we're trying to create something which can function like that um and in the meantime, there are some actions coming up uh, before Christmas. There'll be uh, there's something happening next week at the BBC, um, which will be something of a vigil. Uh, we think that the British media has failed to report on large numbers of deaths from climate change. Um, and interestingly, um, there's an academic in Australia. I think she's an academic in Australia. I think her name's Jane Morton. Um, she speaks uh, in one of her talks about how when you go to look for the victims of climate change, um, 
you can't find the pictures of their faces. And uh, if there's a if there's a terror attack, then you see the all the victims' faces are in the newspaper the next day, and everyone says this is an absolute tragedy. These people were killed unnecessarily, and here they all are. And that's and that is humanised. And then people have a massive emotional reaction to that. We don't do that with people that get killed uh, through the effects of climate change. And notably this year, we've we've seen huge numbers dead in Europe from through uh, wildfires. Um, those those pictures don't make it into the media. Uh, the people don't get recognised uh, in the same way that they might if they'd have died suddenly in a different circumstance. So the aim of this uh, vigil at the BBC next week is going to be to say to them again, same as we're saying to the government, you know, you're not telling the truth on these issues because you're not talking about them enough. You're not educating the public well enough. And also you don't report on, on the on the loss of life, which is being caused uh, quite clearly by by this kind of structural massive problem.